Visit Zaerite.com for all your projects, supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Zaerite. In today's tutorial video, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to make these mesh fence panels. These lace into place with spur grommets that are installed on the side and have some snaps that go over the cable. Main reason we're doing this is there's a lot of wind that just tunnels through here and we're hoping this will cut down on that and it also provides a little bit of privacy and looks great on your fence. Let's get started and show you how it's done. Even though we'll be making several panels, we're only going to show one in this video because the concepts are the same for all of them. The first step is measuring and then cutting the mesh fabric. So we're going to make a panel for this and then we're going to measure from the top of the wire down to the bottom of the wire and then on the sides we're going to lace it and we're going to leave a two inch gap on each side. At the top of the panel uh, we're going to have snap tabs that are flush with the top of the fabric and again, the lacing will be only on the sides. So we're going to do that at the top and we're also going to have those tabs down at the bottom. And we'll come back with our panel and show you how to lace it up. This is our desired finish size, but we need to add for a one inch double hem around all perimeters. So we need to add two inches on every side or four inches to both dimensions. This is our cut size. When lacing upon an edge, typically grommets are placed three to five inches on centers. Here is another fabric fence panel that has a truncated corner at the upper right side. The best approach for applications like that is to ignore the cutoff until hems are pre-basted or pinned in place all around. Then it is trimmed to size before sewing hems in. We'll show that full process here in a little bit. I marked lines on the Pfeiffertex material with a scryball uh, pencil to the size that we need. So now we're going to cut on our line and you can just uh, use uh, regular scissors. Creating the double hem and the mitered corners to cut down on the bulk is next. We're going to create a double hem, one inch, all around the perimeter. So I'm just using my scry ball in the clear acrylic ruler and marking it at two inches. And when we create the other uh, fold, it'll be at three inches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as well. And then you can just move this down the line and continue doing this and we're going to do this all around the entire perimeter. Two inches and then move it into three inches and mark. Now make sure you mark all the way to the corner um, because this is going to prepare us for our mitered corners. So uh, let me just show you what, the, what it should look like at the corners real quick. So here's two inches and here's three inches. And so we have lines that come all the way out here. So we'll do that at all the corners. Now there is one corner that's going to be truncated and that will be treated a little bit differently. But the three corners, if yours was just a, a rectangle or a square, you do it on all four. We're using a quarter inch uh, basting tape for canvas and upholstery. This is an acrylic uh, glue, not a rubber base, so it doesn't yellow. Now, with that being said, I'm going to put this all around the perimeter on all sides. With that being said, this is an open mesh, Pfeiffer Tex, and uh, this glue may attract dirt uh, in time. One reason that we're doing this is it just makes production so much faster and easier, but we also want to prototype it and test it and see if it actually does attract dirt. So that's what we like to do at Sarah. We like to tell our customers the total truth. So if you don't want to worry about the dirt with an open mesh like this, you may want to use pins or the fabric clips. We're going to peel up the transfer paper revealing the glue and I'm going to do just a little bit here because this will be our first hem. So we're going to take this side off. Then I'm going to peel up a little bit of this so I don't have to worry about that. I like to fold someplace close to the center and start there and I'm just going to fold it up to my line. Uh, the, the, because we struck a line this is going to be beautifully straight. Go all the way to the edge and go all the way over here now. And then we'll just come over here and peel this up. And we'll start someplace over here. I'm going to come over here to just, just to show you what we're doing here. So we're folding this up. This is a little bit bulky here, but we're going to show you how we create our miter next. Okay, so here's how we're going to do the mitered corner here. We have it all basted. If, if you didn't baste it and you used uh, uh, clips or pins, this is what you'd, you'd see instead. 
So here, here, this line at three inches comes out here. It doesn't matter your hem. This principle works with, with whatever size hem you have, and the line intersects there. So what I do is I take my clear acrylic ruler, and I line it up on those spots, and I just go straight across like that, and do it on the side that the hem's up on. And then I have my uh, fabric and leather clips. I'll take this and I fold it so that the hems are out, as you can see, so you have this little tail here. If you don't have that little tail, you've done it wrong. And you crease it right there where that corner is. Da, da, da. And then you fold this and this has, should be flush. And you put a clip about an inch away from where you're gonna sew, which is that black line. And we wanna do that to all the corners so we prep it for easy sewing. You can press this if you want. Uh, so we're gonna do that to all four corners. However, one corner is a little bit different. So we're only gonna do this to three corners for this one. So here's our mitered corner, and that's what it should look like. And what we wanna do is we wanna sew on that 45 that we created. So because it's clipped, I can easily tell which corners have been done and haven't been done, and I'll show you that here in a second. I'm gonna move my needle in the center position. I usually sew this about uh, five to four millimeters stitch length, I'm set up at about a four millimeter. And you wanna do some reversing just to make sure that it gets locked in place here. And do some reversing at the end. And that's really all there is to it. And now what we do is I actually cut my threads here and then see that line, I can see through it. You wouldn't be able to do this if there were a solid fabric. You just wanna cut up to this stitch without cutting into that stitch there. And then you wanna cut about an eighth inch away from the stitch here, which reduces the bulk at that corner. And then what I do is I remove the clip so I know that corner is done, and I just move to my next corner and do the same thing. Doesn't matter if this side's up or down, uh, just whichever is easier to feed it in the machine and just do the same thing again. So this is our mitered corner, and this is the wrong side right now. This is our line that we struck on. Now I'm gonna take double-sided tape, I'm gonna fold the miter down, and I'm gonna put it close to the uh, folded edge all the way down on each side before we turn the miters right side out. We have double-sided tape here and here on all sides. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna push this uh, mitered corner to the inside. And we're gonna use a screwdriver or any tool to kind of push the corner out. So you want it to look pleasing and be pushed out to that stitch that you made. And then when you create that hem, that'll be a mitered corner. So let's go ahead and base this one down because the principle for all the other ones are the same. So we're gonna peel up the transfer paper. And then what you wanna do is you wanna uh, base this down on the line that you struck at three inches here and obviously here. And look at that corner. Now this, the beauty of this mitered corner is that it takes out the bulk uh, so I can install a fastener here without having to worry about the super thickness of all those layers because that, that, the thickness is only in that seam. Everything else is normal. After the mitered corners are created, it's time to deal with the truncated corner before sewing the hem in place. If your panels do not have cutouts similar to this, you can skip this chapter. We have miters at all three corners except for this one. This one's gonna have a chop on it. So after you've done the double hem, we did not do a miter here. This has all that bulk at the corner. My triangle starts four inches from the finished edge here along the top and three and a half for our application here. So I just mark it with my scribe ball. Then I uh, will, this is our finish size. So I mark it here lightly. So now that we have that line here and we have all this bulk, I'm gonna lift up my um, basted corner. And if you clipped it, you would just remove some of the clips up to about a foot or so like that and then we're going to peel this back as well so now we only have a little bit of a line showing but that's all we need peel this as well don't worry about the double-sided tape it's going to basically come up okay so now we have that now we take our clear acrylic ruler and uh, we uh, put it right on that line with this spread open. I gotta open it a little bit more. 
laying flat and put it right there on the lights on the line and this is two inches over we do that and we cut that off so this will give us our double hem okay then once that's off so now that that's cut away we can recreate our hem here and also here. So we fix that. I'm going to put double sided tape here just to hold it in place and just peel it back. And this would be folded to that line. That's one inch. And then I'll put double sided tape here one more time again, or clips if you're using clips. And then we fold it right on top of that line. And then you should confirm that your measurements are right. That's it. And now it's time to sew the hems in place, and we're going to use the Sayorite Alterfeed LSC. All right, we're going to put the needle on the left position. We're going to sew in six millimeter straight stitch, which is what I have it in here. And I'm going to use this uh, part of the foot as my guide, but I'm also going to put a magnetic guide on here just to make sure that we're accurate. And I'm starting up here at a corner, and what I'll do is a little bit of reversing here. And we're just going to sew down this side. And we, you can put two stitches in. You can put one here. You can put one here if you'd like. But I'm only going to put one right here, which will hold this hem in place. We'll show you what we do when we get to a corner. OK, we're coming to a corner. And what we want to do is we want to stop sewing approximately where we want to make the turn, which, which will be the same on this side. And you can use your reverse lever if you want to get that needle in a specific spot. Then I like to have the needle coming up slightly so I don't get a skip stitch. I lift my foot and I pivot on the buried needle. Don't forget to lower your foot and sew down this side. We're going to sew all the way around uh, and we'll get to that truncated corner and we'll show you what we do there. So we're getting close to that truncated corner and really this is nothing more than just trying to think it through. So what do we want to do? I'm going to sew up here and then if I sew here, it'd be way over here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of turn that corner. So I'm going to sew up to here. And then needles coming up a little bit. I'll just turn around and lower my foot. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to go in backwards because I went a little bit too far. Needles coming up. Don't even need to lift the foot. Needles coming up, lift the foot, come over here a little bit. Needles coming up, lift the foot, and then I'll put my magnetic guide on and we'll continue sewing around in the same manner. Now that our edges are hemmed, it's time to install the spur grommets. So I have the Sayrite drill hole cutter set and uh, I'm gonna put in number one spur grommets. So I'm gonna use the Sayrite uh, number two uh, Sayrite drill hole cutter. You can buy this individually if you don't want to buy the set. And it just goes in a drill. I like to use the hard pad for this. So obviously we want to grommet at each corner and we've taken out the bulk with our miter cut. But oops, it needs to push a little bit harder. That's how nice it, it does with uh, putting holes. And here I've got another one here that I've marked. Now positions of grommets is all dependent upon your application. So we're not going to show exactly how we positioned each of our grommets, but you'll see it on the fence. When lacing with lines, typically grommets are placed three to five inches on centers on the edges to be laced. This is a nickel plated uh, brass spur grommet. This is the male. It goes through the hole. They grade it and it will be a tight fit. That is customary and intentional. And then this is the female with the spurs and it goes down as such over top of this. Then I'm going to use the die set number one. I used a number two hole cutter to punch the hole and put this through and then I give it a few blows with the mallet. 
and then I just check to make sure that the teeth are buried nicely and everything's rolled beautifully. This is a very strong grommet. Number one or number zero grommets are used for lacing applications and that's what we're doing here. Since our railing is a wire railing, we're going to use snap tabs at the top and the bottom. This is an optional step. Now this is a smaller panel and we are going to lace it here and we want tabs, uh, three webbing tabs with snaps, one here in the middle and then on this end over here and at the bottom as well. I'm going to fold it in half to find the center and then mark the center and I'll show you how we sew these tabs on. This is a polyester uh, one inch webbing and I'm using the serrate edge hot knife with the uh, tempered cutting glass on the bottom and we are going to cut strips that are three inches long uh, and you've got markings on the cutting glass so it's pretty easy to to do this task. I'm using an 11 64 inch uh, barrel on the snap which does mean that if I fold the webbing I need to cut a hole otherwise you should get the uh, quarter inch barrel if you don't want to cut a hole. So here is our webbing tab. I'm going to fold it back to about three quarter of an inch. I'm going to put a pad down here and then I'm going to use a serrate drill hole cutter and I don't even sew this. So now we have a hole right in the center, oops, like that. And since we've already loaded our snap, we want the button to go on the side that's not folded. And all you have to do is position it, it's going to find that hole as long as you're close. And voila. And because we have a hole, it works well with the 11 64 inch barrel. If you don't punch a hole, use the quarter inch barrels for the snap. This is our middle position where we marked it. We want the button socket to be facing down so the button goes up because it'll come over here and it'll wrap around and we want this to be right up against that edge. So I've designed it at three inches uh, to, so it'll do just that when I have it lined up to our one inch hem. And I'm going to lower the needle. My needle's off to the left and uh, I'm set up at about a four millimeter straight stitch and about a four millimeter in reverse. We'll sew there and then I'll also just sew down here near the bottom as well. So we have an eyelet in here and we have a stud mounted in our dies for the press and snap. We have other uh, snap tools you can use as well. This, we're not, we didn't punch a hole through this because this barrel is longer for the eyelet. So we're going to position it right up here at the top, depress the lever, and our snap is installed, and this is how it'll work, like that. So we're going to do that to all these locations. Now it's time to lace our fence panels over the railing. Okay, so we have our panel done, and we're going to snap it in place with the webbing tabs just so that we can make it easier for lacing. And those will work very, very nicely. And we're going to do that at the bottom as well. On this side, we've secured uh, zip ties to the two corners. And what I'd like to do is tension it uh, around the post so that I know exactly where I need to lace it. So we're going to cut these off later on. And I had to put two together to make our distance. So I'm not going to secure it until I know that it's centered right. So let's get it all four corners secured and then we'll start to tension it. Now that we have it secured, I'm gonna pull it taut, trying to make sure that our space is equal from side to side. Let's pull it over here. Now that it's time to lace, how much line do we need? Well, typically, if you're lacing in one direction, you multiply the side to be laced by 3.5. And if you're going in both directions, as we are here, we're going to go down and then back up, you multiply that side by 7.2. In almost all situations, not every situation, that should result in enough line for your lacing application. Okay, we're using an eighth inch leech line. Uh, this is not the line that Sarah sells. Ours is a much higher quality, but we did not bring enough. We're going to do a halyard hitch here. So we've got a pretty big loop here and we're going to come around 
and again and again and then we're going to come over the top and through and then we just cinch it up it's not a knot it's it's a hitch and that will stay very secure so now i'm going to come around the pole or the post and we're going to go above this little knob yeah there we go again and draw this all the way through Good. And then we're going to, yeah, a second helper helps a ton. So we're going to go through with a, a loop here. Yep. And then he's going to come around the post and we're going to go through the loop. And pull this line through. Am I going the right way? Okay. And this loop should be at the front of the grommet as it is here. We've tensioned it up pretty tight and we're going to come down uh, and we're going to put a loop through this one and Matt's going to grab that loop through that side. Okay, then we're going to come around the post and go through that loop. And once he has it through, then I'm going to basically bring that loop to the back side. So it's just flush with the grommet. There we are. And it's nice and tight. And then we're going to come down to the next one and do the exact same thing. So we're just going to repeat this all the way to the bottom. You can do this by yourself, but boy, this helps a lot to have a helper. Around the post, through the loop. And what you should have, it's almost like doing a, a sewing machine lock stitch. What you should have is you should have a run of line here, a blank space, and a run of line here, and it's exactly the same except for opposite on the other side. I got the loop. All right, we'll show you what we do when we come to the bottom. Okay, we're, we're at the last uh, grommet. I'm going to take that and cut it and keep it from going in the water. That's why I had it in my mouth. And we're going to go around this post a little bit differently. So there's our loop. We'll go around. Okay. Up one more, man. Up one more. Okay. Yeah, we're just trying to stay above those. Okay. And then and we're going to go around and we're going to come through the grommet and we're going to just do a regular half hitch. So through the grommet again, around the post. Yep. So we're going to go around the cable and around all the lines. So I'm going to come through here. Duh. There we go. Throwing in a half hitch there. That's good. Yeah, we're doing half hitch. <laughs> and then we'll just do this a couple times, and we'll uh, cut the rope or the line with the with a hot knife. Again, we're using the edge cordless hot knife, and we're going to trim the line at the top as well so that it doesn't unravel. Okay, we're gonna cut the cable ties on all of our posts. I think we've done it everywhere except for 
here at the top and we're going to cut our line on the other side. This side has a better line that's available from Sailrite. It uh, hot knifes so much better. So I highly recommend you buy your leech line from Sailrite. Uh, I'll show you a close up here of the difference. So this is the Sailrite line and this is the other one. Even the hot knifed end is not nearly as nice, but it works. On this, uh, these two panels, what we're going to do is we're going to do a uh, kind of like a boot strap with Z's going all the way down and then coming back up again. So we did a halyard hitch here, and we're going to go from this grommet to the next one down, always going through the back side. So we're going to run our line all the way through like that. And then I'm going to go to the other side. And again, always through the back side, we're going to skip that one and come down here and come through. And we're going to repeat this process until we get all the way to the bottom. So the back side coming through here. And we'll show you what we do when we get to the bottom. OK, so we've gone through all of them. And it's time to come back up. And what we're going to do is come from this one to this one again always going through the back side for us there are multiple ways you can do lacing so if you don't like this way you can do it any way you want so like that and then we're going to come up through here and hit that one in the back all the way to the top just like we did before and then obviously over here through the back side yeah, this is looking really good. So we're almost to the top. We got tension the way I like it. I'm going to come back over here. And then we're going to go across like we did at the bottom and go through that grommet here. And I think we'll go through the back again. Now I'm just going to do a a bunch of knots here. You, you can do this in a different way if you choose, but uh, just something that holds like that. I'll probably do it a couple times. So this is the cordless ed Sayerite Edge hot knife. We also have a corded one. And now we've got that job done. Once the center is laced like that, then all we're going to do is we're going to lace the ends, pulling it taut, uh, as we showed before with the panel on the opposite side of this gate. So we're going to do that on both sides, and we'll show you what it's like when we're done. Brands of fabrics that would work well for this are Bifertex, Textiline, and Solstice 86. We chose to use a more open weave vinyl mesh called Bifertex Standard, or if you choose Textiline, it's called Textiline Open. Tighter weaves are called Bifertex Plus, Textiline Sunsure, and Solstice 86. Those are all great choices. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.